What is carbon monoxide? Most people have heard of it and know that it's potentially hazardous, but they don't know much about it beyond that. If you design, build, or modify buildings, you have the potential to create situations that result in people being exposed to carbon monoxide. So let's start with the basics. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas. People can't see it or smell it when it's present. If you were in a room containing carbon monoxide right now, you wouldn't know it unless the levels were high enough to make you feel lightheaded or nauseous. Carbon monoxide has a density similar to air, so it doesn't sink or rise. It mixes uniformly into the air around the location where it's generated. It's not a naturally occurring substance in the sense that it is not normally present in outdoor air. Carbon monoxide is a product of the incomplete combustion of hydrocarbon fuels like oil, natural gas, propane, wood, or coal. And it's detrimental to people, causing problems that can range from mild temporary symptoms to chronic illness and even death. We burn hydrocarbon fuels for many reasons. When we burn them, they give off energy, and we call this process combustion. The energy produced can be used to heat our homes, cook our food, spin turbines to generate electricity, push pistons that move our cars, and many other useful tasks. Combustion is a chemical process in which a substance reacts rapidly with oxygen and gives off heat. The original substance is called the fuel. It can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. In buildings, it's usually oil, natural gas, LP gas, or wood. The source of oxygen is air, which contains 21% oxygen. Simply mixing fuel and oxygen won't result in combustion, though. If that were the case, the flammable items around us, furniture, paper, our own bodies, would spontaneously burst into flames. But that doesn't happen. Combustion will only begin if there's a source of heat, also called an ignition source, to get the reaction started. Ignition can be accomplished by a pilot light, a spark, or a hot surface. The ignition is usually intentional, but it's not always. For example, a gas leak can be turned into an explosion by an electrical spark or an appliance pilot light. During combustion, more heat is given off, and some of that heat serves to keep the reaction going. In addition, new chemical substances are created from the fuel in the air. These substances are called exhaust or flue gases. Most of the exhaust comes from chemical combinations of the fuel and oxygen. Some can also come from chemical combinations of the oxygen and other components of the air that feeds the reaction. The combustion process can be controlled or stopped by controlling the amount of fuel available, the amount of oxygen available, or the presence of the initial source of ignition heat. When a hydrocarbon fuel like gasoline, oil, or natural gas burns, the exhaust includes water and carbon dioxide. Now I'm going to get into some chemistry here, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So hang in there with me. This is important in understanding how carbon monoxide is formed. Let's take a look at the simplest hydrocarbon fuel, methane, which also happens to be the primary component of natural gas. Its chemical formula is CH4, meaning that it contains one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. That's why we call it a hydrocarbon fuel. The other component necessary for combustion is oxygen. It usually exists in pairs of oxygen atoms, so we call it O2. When the two compounds are mixed and ignited, both molecules are broken apart into their component atoms and a lot of heat is released from those broken chemical bonds. Then the atoms recombine into new molecules. The carbon from each methane molecule combines with two oxygen molecules to form carbon dioxide or CO2. The di and the dioxide means two, two oxygen atoms in the molecule. Carbon dioxide doesn't present much of a hazard. We exhale it, plants consume it. It's been identified as a problematic greenhouse gas, but that's a story for another course. The other molecule that's formed is a combination of the hydrogen from the methane with oxygen. Each oxygen atom combines with two hydrogen atoms. The result is H2O, water. This is not necessarily obvious. This is brand new water that's formed. It's not water that was present in the fuel previously and just evaporated. It's newly created water. Of course, that's also a story for another course. In the diagram, you see that there are two oxygen molecules and two water molecules. That's just so the number of atoms are the same both before and after the reaction. The important thing to understand is that water and carbon dioxide are the products of the combustion reaction. If the fuel is pure and the oxygen is pure, and they're present in just the right proportions and under ideal conditions, this is what happens, and we call it complete combustion. 
For practical purposes, complete combustion means that every carbon molecule in the fuel is able to attach itself to two oxygen molecules forming carbon dioxide. But in some circumstances, it may only be able to attach itself to one oxygen. The resulting compound is called carbon monoxide, with the mono meaning one. There are numerous reasons this can occur. Most often it's due to a fuel-air mixture that is rich, meaning that there's too much fuel and too little air. It can also happen when the flames are too cool, making it hard for the second oxygen to bond to the carbon. We'll cover these mechanisms in more detail in a later lesson. Whatever the cause, generation of carbon monoxide can present a serious health hazard, and it should be avoided both in the design and the setup of combustion equipment. The reality is that a flame never generates just carbon monoxide. It always generates mostly carbon dioxide. Sometimes it generates no carbon monoxide at all. Sometimes it just generates a trace amount of carbon monoxide. But if the carbon monoxide levels get elevated to around 0.01% or more, we consider it significant and call the reaction incomplete combustion. Highly dangerous combustion gases might contain 10% carbon dioxide and 0.1 or 0.2% carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide can be generated by any device in a building that burns a hydrocarbon fuel. The list is extensive. It includes automobiles, barbecue grills, central heaters, space heaters, water heaters, kitchen stoves, ovens, fireplaces, and clothes dryers.